We're joined once again by a good friend of this channel, Mr. Fibbo Swanee. He's been updating his macro views on Bitcoin for many, many times throughout the years now. And I'm just going to hand it over to my good friend, Mr. Fibbo Swanee here. If you're not familiar with him, his links in his socials will be in the description below. He is a verified trader. He's been around, he's been around the block for many, many, many moons and hopefully many more as well. And with that said, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Swanee. I want you to update on your macro view and just take us through everything and your whole system. All right, man. Well, thanks for having me again. Uh, been uh, been looking forward to uh, going over this with you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna hit some uh, BTC time frames here. Uh, I'm gonna actually start on the highest time frame and then work our way down. Uh, this time, I'm gonna look at the uh, uh, start off with the annual. Uh, and the re um, okay, yeah, I thought this was kind of interesting because uh, what I was looking at here was it. You get this pattern here of one, two, three years up. And then you have a year of correction mm -hmm. uh, and then you have another three years up and then a year of correction. Uh, so if you're looking at where we're at at the moment, we had one year up or on the second year of up. And then we got to get ready to go into the next year of possibly another bullish run to the upside. So I have I have this red zone highlighted here as uh, where prices could go. Uh, and this a lot of the stuff I'm looking at, I'm looking at like. 120 to 130 range somewhere right there about yeah. 120 130k and then there and then this 84 to 85k is kind of another step along the way of getting there uh but the things i was looking at here was um you know definitely the the one year correction with the three bars up is pretty interesting but then when you look at the lows to the highs here uh, and i just put a fib fib levels on here um okay. the I'm looking at a couple of things like oh, one, okay. one, you corrected back down toward the 61.8%. This yeah. one actually dipped down a little bit lower. And that's when everybody was like, oh, it's going to zero and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and then uh, and then it came down here and tested the 61.8% level again. And you, that was that 16.5 uh, area that hit. Yeah. Just uh, sorry, before you go on, uh, what are you anchoring that um, that retracement on? Uh, just the highs and lows. Uh, the high. Yeah, the, but the, but the, the low, low here on, after on the start of the retracement. Oh, okay, okay up okay, to the okay, high, see, see. yeah, and and, gotcha. and go in that direction. Uh, but the, but the interesting, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It, they're all from the low from the lows on this line chart. Gotcha. Uh, to to the correction. That's all. Uh, and then and then the a couple other interesting things that I saw on here was, um, as this was coming up through like coming up through right here. Once it gets past the 61.8% level, I know it's going the other direction, but it was just kind of interesting that in the in that year, it, once it breaks that, it goes to the high. Uh, and then once yeah. we broke this one, it, you know, it would go to the high. And and we're right now we're right at that kind of level, you know, this 58 to 62. Oh, uh, and and it's getting ready to try to push through that. And I think once we get out of this uh um period of consolidation basically over the last five six months i mean it's a large range but it is a a large consolidative range that we're in at the moment so i think we're right at that precipice of of getting ready to jump through that uh and once we do that we're going to be kind of working our way up to that 120 you know 125k um into 2025 probably i, I show some things around october uh november maybe of 25 of getting up to that 125 and of course that's a minimum because when you look back at the previous years it went up on the on the fib levels it went up to 500 percent 800 percent um so that the 125 is a minimum for me so i wouldn't be surprised if it went to 150 you know just say something like that you know like that, that kind of thing uh so that that's the first one i wanted to kind of look at was just this nice pattern of three uh three up one down and then going up again so uh, finishing off that positive second year and let's go into the third year uh, and uh, hit that. And, and, and I just put this, put the high, uh, you know, the high to high to high cycle uh, here. So you're looking at Jan, you know, 2025 as being that high. Now, no, now where in that 2025 period, we'll, we'll find, we'll try right. to figure that out. But uh, so going from the annual, then I went into the quarterly because, uh, and, and I had a bunch on here too. Uh, so when you look at the quarterly on on Bitcoin, I have a high to high to high here. So you go from high to high to high on this pattern. It's kind of hard to see here, but if you look here, that's where the high yeah. was. Uh, but the uh, so you got that, uh, and then and then I was looking at some other you know fib levels and those kind of things. But when you go from the low here 
uh, to the having or, or, or yeah, to the having, because I, I mark these off by havings, I think. So you're looking at the low to, no, that, take that back. It's not the having. What am I talking about? I'm looking at a different chart. The This vertical line here is the uh, once it broke above the previous high, because you can see right here on the, there's a wick that goes above the previous high here on the 100%. Uh, and that that is happening during that quarter. Um, so what I'm looking at is once they made a low or once the chart made a low here and you work your way over, you get eight bars before it breaks to uh, making a new high above. Oh, the that high. is interesting. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the other one is uh, just out to the next quarter that it would make, get up to the 200% and further. So it, it's this, this area right in here is kind of what we're looking at where we're at currently. But when you look over in the, at the next period, same kind of thing. If you take from the low, to the when it broke the high you're looking at eight bars uh so i'm also you know so if you look back where we're at at the moment um the low the low is right here uh and then if you go eight bars you're we're in that quarter that should bring us above the the 72k or whatever the high was um it should push us above during that quarter now is it going to happen in october november or december I'm still leaning toward the end of October as a po or sometime during October to break that to at least trade above the previous high like it did pat on uh, as it did in past patterns. Uh and then and then of course just nine bars out just going out to the next uh, this is just October, November, December, January, February, March just these mm -hmm. lines here just to show that we could we could likely break above in in this quarter and get to this uh there, there's some numbers here on the side that are the FIB levels. And the 127 to 141% level is where the first level that I like to look at. So once it breaks out above a new high, that's going to be that first resistance point. Uh, and it's it's a zone between 83K and 91K. So you're looking at, you know, I'm, I'm looking around 85 because 85 kind of comes in on some of these other charts. So I can see it kind of going to 85, maybe coming back down. And then rallying up to 122 or more uh, later on, as you can see, the FIB extension off this, the 200% off of this, off of this breaking high, is at 122. Uh, so I think we could get to 122 um, uh, into the next quarter after that. So, uh, so maybe March could be the earliest. Um, but then again, it could take a little while. It's hard to make that timing exactly, but. I like the situation that we're in when you look at this kind of pattern here, and then you saw this kind of pattern also. Uh, mm -hmm. you, once we broke that, we got this nice bull run, and then once we broke it, we got a bull run. So that's what I'm kind of looking at here to keep that process in, in play um, on on the quarterly. So, which makes sense on this because if we if it's if it's going to start breaking, you're going to get this zone in here on the annual, working our way up on on another positive year as we as we move into 2025, uh, and then. Uh, once we go from the quarterly uh, down to um, the monthly, I got a couple of monthly charts. But one on the one I was looking at here, I got a, a red. The red moving average here is the five EMA on the monthly, and there's a blue eight EMA. Uh, and I was just looking at the crossovers here, and and, and this crossed over to the downside as we got th you know kind of like three settles underneath this, and then it started on the downtrend on the crossover to the downside. Uh, and then it's when the red five EMA crossed back up through the eight right here uh, that it, it broke. I mean, we've got a period of consolidation here, but then it started to take off. Uh, so, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. And as this red, there's no crossover here yet. And and if we have the support that we're at at the moment, and it starts moving up to the upside, there shouldn't be a crossover, and we, and we should be able to continue to the upside. So it'd be it'd be so, something similar to this. Uh, so when you when you get down here and it doesn't cross. And, and it just kind of keeps working on a nice bull run yeah. to the upside. Yeah, you get this correction and we're working our way. I just put this as a possible movement, kind of what I was talking about earlier. Um, I got a couple of fib levels on here. When you take the high to the low here, you know, it gives you the extensions that I'd like to see for that first possible reversal. And that's where that's that level between 83 and 91 that I was looking at. But then when you take the the trend based extension off of this move to the upside and have the correction back. And looking for the next move to the upside, the 61.8% on the trend-based extension is at 85.1, which th falls within this range. So that would be kind of the level that I would think once we break the new high, um, I think we can move to around that 85K level. 
uh, and then maybe get a little bit of a correction back to some kind of support in here and then start taking off into that 122 ish area, uh, which the 200 percent is the 122. Uh, and then there's also an extension that starts at 122 to 131. Uh, there's 107 in there. I'm sure there's going to be, you know, some minor support and resistance levels that you get as you as things work to the upside. But I'm kind of looking at, at this as the as the pattern once we start to break that new high. So I'm kind of looking at that. Uh, the the uh, the fib level here, um, just just for uh, kicks and giggles. If you put the uh, if you start the fib down here on the low, and just say it goes up to the to the 85 here, mm -hmm. um, the 30 38 oh, nice. percent level yeah. would be around 71. Uh, so I think it could go up to there, come back down there, and then take off to the upside and get above mm -hmm. that. And then once 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 this hits in this range. Uh, this this uh, this zone will be resistance, but then once this 91 breaks, uh, then the 120 that the 200 percent comes into play because because a lot of stuff on my on my threshold theory is uh, once you get three settles above the 141 percent level, the probability of going to the 200 percent gets really really high. Like it, I would say 70 80 percent probability of going uh, to that 200 percent. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. Is is that movement to eighty five? Correct back, and then once we get above that, and, and kind of start cranking that uh, one twenty two should be should be a no brainer to be honest. Once we get this thing cranking, uh, but that's what I'm looking at on the monthly. Uh, and then what I did was I kind of flipped the monthly over and, and did an inverse look. Um, and when I do that, it makes it look you know pretty bearish. <laughs> you know when you look yeah. when you flip it. Yeah. Um, and I got a couple of fib extensions on this one that I'm looking at also. You take the low, to, the low that happened here. You had the small correction, and you had a low here to a high. Uh, and then what I want to look for is once this breaks, uh, you want to look at the extension level uh, as the possible reversal level, and that was that fifty-seven to sixty-one here. Uh, but it came down and it broke all the way through, and we had three settles underneath this range. Now this level here at this fifty-seven becomes resistance, um, and and working our way down to where. Uh, we can get into these ranges down here, and that's where this 85 comes into play. I just flipped it over, but you can kind of see if you take the trend-based right. extension off of this move here, and we get a correction, and this is going to be, and assuming that, that that test that we had at 49K or whatever is going to be the, the spot to, to hold, uh, then we would start working our way down, and that's where the 85, the 107, and the 123 come into play, just kind of flipping it. Um, and... And just other, uh, before yeah. you go on, um, yeah. I think a question that a lot of people are going to be interested in, perhaps myself as well. Yep. Um, if you were to come up with an invalidation point for uh, kind of what you're looking at here, would that be basically 57,000 and change? Uh, on, on, on a monthly, on a monthly. On the monthly? Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a tougher one to say on the monthly, but I would say if we, if we settled back a back, below 57 i think that might be a that might be a pretty bad thing but it but it would have to be it'd have to close the month of right right that's, that's what i mean on a closing yeah, basis yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah closing uh, basis on a month it would be back below 57 one yeah okay um, we're on it, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that would that would kind of invalidate this um if Got it you. happens so because i mean as you can see it wicked 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 and it never right never settled back below that uh so that that's given me confidence that that it could kind of hold there uh, and work its way back to the downside. So I'm just kind of leaving this open as kind of the risk zone, uh, you know, working our way to the downside. So you got this boom, boom, and a possible another boom to the downside there. Um, nothing else really on this, just the, just the two FIB levels that I had, the low to high, and looking at the extensions on both these. So the, these two extension levels, uh, the 83 to 91 and the 57 to 61, um, are pretty significant for, for the way I look at things. Uh, and kind of seeing where those support and resistance levels are. Um, it is quite interesting uh, indeed, especially for myself, just because I have so many things that come in in the high 80s, actually. Um, so a shot there and a correction there would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and high 80s falls in that range. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it falls in the range that I have on the extension all the way to 91. So if you got high 80s, I, I mean, that's perfect. Um, that's, that, that's a good spot to be. I mean, it's a... Uh, just some of the stuff I'm looking at gives me about 85, but if it goes to 89, hey, what's 4,000 among friends? You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
so percentage wise these are small moves yeah 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 exactly small exactly moves. yeah 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 um, and then uh, going over to, I have an eight day and there's a lot of patterns on here. I thought it was very interesting. So I'm, I'm kind of watching this one a little bit. Um, I got a bunch of different trend lines on here. I got the trend line and, if, and then it breaks and then holds. And then you got the other trend lines going the other direction. So once these break, I'm looking at these, these uh, lower trend lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but a couple things in here. I got, I got a, a cycle on here on the eight day that goes from high to high to high here on these. Uh, and then you had another, um, so I have the next high. So if you got, so if these high to highs here, keep the pattern going, you're looking at a high at October of 25, uh, on, on this. So, um, so the October 25 would be the time that you would see the minimum of 122, uh, or, or higher, uh, when it comes to the 122 K that I had on some of those other ones. Um, another one I have is I have a trend break to trend break. Uh, when when the trend line broke right here, uh, mm -hmm. if you take the cycle, you can see right here. Oh wow! It, it broke the trend line on this one too. And then if you go back to here, you can see it broke the trend line here on this one. So I thought that was mm -hmm. kind of interesting. So when that when that comes back around, um, you know, eventually you're gonna you're gonna have a a, a downtrend, uh, and then eventually you're gonna see um, a break over on this one. Uh, you know, if the pattern keeps keeps going as it is. Um, so, and then, and then also another one on here, I have a low to low to low. So you got the low to low to low here. Um, and, and then another low that comes out, you know, in October 26 go. So that's why I, you know, when you look at all these different time frames and different patterns, you know, you got the annual with the three years up and the one down, that would make sense because if this wants to hold true, we go out to October 25, make a high. And then we start, you know, start correcting as we go into 2026 uh, and, and work from there. Now, now the levels are what we're going to try to get. But that what I like the 122 as a minimum. I'm, I'm going to kind of keep that in the back of my mind as the level that I'm going to kind of watch for. Um, and then I had, had a couple other things in here where I was I was trying to look at like we had we had these little periods of consolidation post having uh, before it started to take off. You got a little period of quietness before it took off. And I think that's kind of where we're at at the moment. We're, we're in this level of like this period of consolidation before we're getting ready to take off. Uh, and we are getting up to the point where we're, we are starting to continue to pressure that upside resistance that we'll see on a couple other charts. But um, I think I think we're right on that time that we're getting ready to kind of pump into a new high. And 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 October should be the time to do it, right? If, it, if the timing's mm -hmm. going to hold right. Uh, so so going with this eight day, then you go on to the weekly. Uh, and and this is this is where my this is my whole threshold theory chart. But there's a whole bunch on here. But we'll I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a couple. Um, the the main thing that I'm looking for is uh, keeping the uh, threshold that I watch with, when it comes to the bull and bear zones uh, with the with this consolidation that we had and the price went all the way down to uh, the low here um, at 49k. Uh, the these levels down here are maintaining the bull zone. So uh, to me, that's the first thing I like. I, that, that, that's what I want to see. And, and my reversal on this is if the, you know, if this weekly ends up going into the bear zone, then we're back to the drawing board. We're going to go into a much, much larger correction. Um, but so far that's not happening. Uh, and, and the last time lows were tested when it, when it, we had a nice move up here and had a little correction, you can see the, um, you know, the correction here held the bull zone and then it took off and then we're in another correction. And as you can see, the the RSI is still right on that edge, uh, but but maintaining the bull zone, which is good. So I because I, a lot of times people ask me, what's my validation point? Well, it's going to be three weekly settlements. Well, first of all, you're going to get under the bull into the bear zone, which right now is at 51 six. So this market could go all the way back down to 51 six and still mm -hmm. maintain that bullish structure. Um, so that's kind of my line in the sand uh, when it comes to um, uh, on the weekly. So you'd have to get the get down to fifty one six, and then this, and then you'd have to have. Uh, uh, well, it, it gets it gets complicated on here. I won't even go into all of it. But the main thing the main thing is is uh, uh, I'll I'll be watching this if it goes into the bear zone, and then I'll invalidate everything, and then then it'll be a primary bearish market. Now for that to happen during this time with all those different 
uh, cycles that we've just looked at with all the different time frames. It would be very weird to break into a bearish market. I mean, would it make right now? Sense, yeah. yeah, it would. It would just not make sense at all. Um, not to say that it can't happen, but right. when it comes to just probabilistically um, speaking, unlikely. yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So a couple other things in here. I got uh, the low before the rally here, uh, and then then you had to move up, and then it came back down, made another low right here. Then it rallied, yeah. make another low right here. Uh, so I think we can get. I, I got this area in here, kind of this movement to the upside, this kind of range of where I think prices could go. Uh, and then um, the the other thing I did is it, it's not quite Elliott wave pattern, but um, you got you got kind of this one move to the upside, and then you got a little bit of a correction in here. Uh, and then you had a wave three, and then we're in this wave four possibility with a wave five to the upside. So if this is the case, and when th and when and when the the wave three is the longest out of the two or out of the other ones, um, you look at the distance of wave one. So I'm just kind of measuring this. Uh, it was 102% from the low to the high here. So if you just took that movement uh, and once we break into a new high here, if this low maintains, the 102% comes in right around 98, 99,000, uh, which is right in this Fib extension zone that I have from uh, the low to high here. Um, so that would be that first level. Now, if it wants to go the 196% that it did from this low to high, uh, that puts us up, you know, at 147 or so. Uh, but but the interesting thing is, is, if you look at these two percentage moves, um, they match up really well with a couple different trend-based extensions I'm looking at. Uh, you're looking at a, at a 98K here, at a 98K here, that kind of that kind of match up pretty nicely. Uh, which the 98K comes in here off the 102%. Uh, and then if it wants to go all the way up to the 200% on both of these two different extensions, uh, you're looking at 145 and 147, and the and the 196 percent get rid of this thing, uh, gets gets up to uh, um, right there at that same level. So so these two levels are pretty pretty important to me when it comes to the, this pattern uh, is working up to that 98 and the 147. Now, it's not exactly the same as my 85 to 122, but it does give you that sense of direction, uh, that sense of movement to the upside. Uh, and if this low holds, this will be the kind of the tornado route that you kind of see on weather maps. We're kind of looking that direction. <laughs> uh, so, so we're looking at, at that. For, Path instruction uh, here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and a lot, uh, some other things like uh, on my threshold theory is the red here. Uh, and the 56 to 60K is that, is that support zone. Uh, it definitely came down and it never had three settles underneath the zone. Uh, and now it's back down there testing the zone again. So this is key support for me uh, with that 80K uh, as, as a possibility of movement to the upside. But I like 85K based on some other patterns. Um, and then I looked at the um, the movement from this low. So since we're doing low, low before rally uh, cycle here, you take this low to when it actually made the high here it was 33 bars and if we did that 33 bars to this point it gives us that first quarter of 25 which when you look back at the other ones uh that's that first quarter that i would that i would think that we would see that 85k uh maybe even much higher as we get into that 2025 time period uh into that quarter so that's why that that's why i got this path of uh of price movement um, you could, I mean, you could take something along the lines of just like this, this kind of movement right here would be the same kind of movement right here, uh, finishing out the whole movement to the upside. So I know there's other things on here, but that was the main thing I'm looking at. But the, uh, the key thing is to keep the bear, keep the bull zone. And so far that's happening. Uh, and then we go on to, um, then if you go on to the daily, um, you know, get a little bit more near term, uh, we definitely, we went back, this is all threshold theory on this chart. Uh, we went into the bull zone right here as 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 the uh, RSI clicked back up into the bull zone. Uh, so you you went long right about 62k basically. Uh, yeah, we're underwater a little bit at the moment, but on this uh, on this little ABC movement to the downside right here, uh, getting because the the threshold started at 59,174, uh, and the market to me is that's the key support level to look kind of look at here to for a buy. Um, so, so if you got into the market, you bought what right, right at the close here. Um, so you're going to be a little bit underwater, but as you can see, the, uh, the bull zone is still maintaining. 
Uh, it can go down to 59,383 uh, right now. This this actually moves as price moves. This was actually a little bit underneath. Yeah, yeah, it it's moved very. Interesting. That's actually my level right now for for a little bit of a breakdown. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly where it could go and still maintain the structure yep, to the outside. Yep, yep. Exactly, so, exactly. So we are finding a little bit of buying interest off this level. So we'll kind of see if we can get some momentum behind it. And right now, there's not a lot of bullish momentum. Uh, so we could kind of probably stay in this in this uh, shitty consolidation that we've been in with a slight edge to the downside. But this is really, to me, just this old period of consolidation, mm -hmm. uh, just waiting yeah. to break out. Uh, what I was looking for originally was three settles above 65.5, which we actually got. We actually got three settles above 65.5, not to not as a buy signal, but as a as a something that increases the probability for me that a new high will will be in place before right. we that like a real place. reversal is, is actually happening yes yeah, yeah so i was a little bit more comfortable uh, you know going yeah. long um uh, and and kind of kind of staying long a little bit on my daily um i when it comes to the daily and we we bought back in here off of other thresholds uh so so basically i'm long 30 percent uh which is three tranches um in that bucket of capital that i use for btc and and so far um I'm still maintaining that 30% because we're uh, we're still in the bull zone. And then I would sell 10% at each one of these targets. Uh, the first target's right there around 68K. Um, take some profit off of the buy back, back at like 53, I think it was somewhere right around there. Um, and and then uh, the next target would be right at the at this high here uh, that, that goes right into the, inside this Viv extension zone um, at 70, basically right around 74. Uh, and then once that tags and what I'm hoping will happen is, is if you move the fibs up to that level right there, um, then this, the 68 two would be where the shallow fib is. Uh, so I would like it to go up to that point, come back down, get, get long again. And then once this zone hit as a target, um, then, then you're looking at 87, uh, on the daily, which is pretty close to the 85 on those other time frames that we're looking mm -hmm. at. It's also matching yours that you're looking at the upper eighties. Yeah. Uh, so that that's kind of the the pattern that I'm looking at on the daily here to get us up to that 87k uh, with with a few profit stops along the way would be nice. But uh, that that's what we're kind of looking at there. So um, let's see real quick. Uh, last, I mean, if you go to the four hours for some trading here, um, we're in the bear zone. Went into the bear zone on this candle here. Um, one, but once we went into the bear zone, the first area that I want to look for for a buy is inside the FIB extension zone between between 59.2 and 59.7. And when you look back at this point, this was kind of the area of a, of a new threshold. Um, and this is kind of that spot or this kind of, you know, the, the low where buying interest came in. Uh, so to me, that's where my target was. And that's where I got bought right in here. Um, so I got long while in the bear zone on the four hour. Given that the daily is still holding the is still maintaining bullish structure, uh, the the weekly is still maintaining bullish structure. So I was comfortable getting a little bit more long on my four hour bucket uh, to to uh, to kind of hold here. And I'm actually going to hold this one and press it. Uh, so if it gets into the bull zone, I'm just going to add to that position and 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 keep working our way to the upside um, as you know as more support starts coming into the market. And then, and then some of the targets will be, um, you know, sixty three seven might be a might be an area to to sell um, some of it. And if I get more, if it gets into the bull zone and I'm long again, then you're looking up at sixty five seven, those kind of things. Uh, mm -hmm. But the main thing was is that all the other ones are still relatively long term structurally bearish or bullish. Uh, so that's why I was I was comfortable buying at my target and going long at that point. Now if it now, if it broke down here and, and broke down the uh, the 141 percent, and we had three uh, four hour candles settle underneath 59.2, uh, then the 200 percent would come in, and that's right there at 57, uh, and that would be another buy target that I would do. So I'm actually I actually had a limit order in here, and I have a limit order in sitting there, and I'm just going to kind of dollar cost average that because uh, that 57, as you remember when you look back at those other time frames, that was kind of that you know, line in the sand area that we talked about. And if we get, right. I think, what, what was it on the, um, can't remember which, which chart it was, but um, let's see. 
Yeah, 50, th this one right here, this 57 one. Uh, if we got that monthly and it closes that month below or below 57 one, that was that invalidation point that we were talking about on the monthly. Uh, so to me, I don't mind taking some risk of buying here and buying here cost to average into this. And if that 57 one for the month settles out, yeah, I'll take my loss on that and and move on because the whole the whole primary trend will sh will shift the other way if yeah. that happens. Um, so so that's why I'm not I'm not uh, not too bad taking a little risk here. And if it does go all the way down to that point, you know, I'll, I'll have a 58k average. I would I wouldn't have any problem with that going forward. So so that's kind of where we're at uh, looking at the uh, different time frames and all that. So any questions for me? Or any other thing you're so thorough with everything that uh the questions kind of answer themselves the whole way through, man. Okay. Um I guess some rapid I mean the main one was the invalidation point. That's that's something that I always want to know. Obviously, your timing for this move seems quite clear. You're looking for basically the yep. precipice of this cycle base uh late 2025, somewhere around October, November, December area. Yep. Um yeah, other than, I mean, those are the two big ones typically. Yeah, so, so, so basically the October, November, December that we're coming up on, that's yeah. going to be probably the 85K high or somewhere between right. 85 yeah. and 90. Yeah, I, I, you know, if you got the upper 90 or upper 80s, uh, I think that's fine too with different patterns. So yeah, that would be that that next three months. But then it could, as, it could get up to 122 as early. The earliest would be March of, of 25. Right. That, so right. those are the two levels that I'm looking at. 85k for this quarter, and then 122 for that next quarter. Here's That's a good question earlier. for you. Yeah. What do you what do you prioritize more, price or time? Um, when it comes to to call in a top in this case, time. Because okay. yeah, it's because okay. Very it's, it's because the way I look at things with the fibs. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's more about the. It's more about the proportion, I see, than it is yeah. the price. So okay, but, very interesting. But, and, and that's why everything's always around a range, right? It's hard to say yeah. it's going to go to eighty-five k exactly. But right. But if is it going to go between eighty-three and ninety? That's yeah, yeah. That's where I think it could really go to. Um, it's just that I get a lot of different patterns around eighty-five k. So that's where we okay. Kind of there, okay. So, so let, let's do something fun to kind of end this one on. Um, mm -hmm. If you were to give and this is very difficult to do for anyone listening out there like don't fucking hold him to this is like, <laughs> not easy to do although although swanee is one of the best of at it especially on the macro scale he's one of the best uh that i've seen um if you were to give a general guideline of what this next year into the high is going to be in terms of price in terms of consolidation in terms of the fun times and probably you know the next boring times as well how would that look starting from here Hmm. So, so, so what you're saying is, is like, as I was saying, going up to 85, I'm saying predict the market perfectly from this exact moment. Uh, <laughs> no, like, okay. It, it like, do you expect Bitcoin to go basically up from here? We've seen the low, it's going to go yep. over the next few months to 80, 90, come back down, spend some time going sideways throughout, you know, Q1 of 2025, something like that is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. I, I, I would say when you look at, this kind of pattern here, I would say you're looking at. Let me see where I have my here. The month, the monthly would do it probably. So, so this is where I'm kind of looking at is uh, we're we're at the the low is in based on what I'm looking at. The low should be in uh, because when you look at some of these, the support zone right here, um, the support zone comes from the 61.8 percent level here at 48.5, uh, which was the which was the high here at 69 down to the low of 15.4. Uh, so this 48, this 48, five right here, once that broke, that's going to be, you know, pretty key resistance. And, and it got down almost, to, almost to the point where it, it touched it. Didn't quite get there, but pretty close. And then if you look at the other one from the low here up to the high, and I'm looking at this trend based extension, you look, or the, um, yeah, trend based extension here, the 38.2% levels at 51. So this this forty eight to fifty one was the zone that I wanted to 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 buy for one, uh, and and then second of all, that's the support zone. Once that held and started to work its way back to the upside, on on especially on that wick, that wick's a very bullish wick uh, off of that off of that monthly. 
Um, that right there is a key to me that the sport's going to hold. So with that, with that in play, um, then you're looking at this, then you're looking at, or, you know, anywhere between 83 and 91. I like the 85 area based on those other patterns. So you're looking at from where we're at now, all the way up to 85, and that's going to come at the end of this quarter. Like th that's where the, um, so you're expecting yeah. new highs this quarter as high as maybe 90, as low as 80. Yes. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Then and what then, does Q1 of 2025 look like? Yeah. That and then you might have like a you know a little bit of a quick correction or that's and, a and, and, period for you. Yeah. yeah. It, and it might be it might be within January or that next month or whatever. Right, right. But it's but it's not a uh it's not that 80% correction that we've gotten a lot yeah. over the because when you look at the annual, uh it's not until that third year you get that that really huge correction. And that's not right. what I'm talking about. I'm just looking at just a normal correction, uh, you know, coming back and then testing um, the 38.2% level off the late. If it got up to that point, then you're looking at like 72 ish uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then I think that's when it would get that next big break to the upside. So you're looking at uh, the move from here in the first quarter. And, and, and that's why I moved it out to October of 25. Um, so you're basically looking from 73 to 122 uh, during 2025, basically. Yeah. Uh, one, okay. Once you get, so th that's what I'm kind of looking at. So, so I think the latest, basically, it would get October 25 based on these other patterns. Um, you know, like the the January, February, March would be the er like March of 2025 up to 122 would be the extreme earliest it would happen. And and then, mm -hmm. so the, I, I mean, I like later in 2025 makes much more sense uh, when you look at October or whatever. So 85 by the end of this year, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and then a little bit of probably a correction in January. And then, then February, March, you know, will be most likely February and March would be above 85. And maybe that's where you get these uh, when you look at these other levels real quick, like this 107. Uh, maybe may, it would probably do something along the lines of uh, of uh, something like this. Go back up to 107 and, and then correct back and then and then go like that. That's more like more likely to happen. Uh, something along those lines instead of straight to 122. Um, These so are you're probably brutal moves, by the way. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I think they could, I think they could do pretty good. Like if you go to yeah. this low up to this high right here, then that kind of matches right here. So yeah. this could actually yeah. correct back. So you could go up to 107, back down to 85 during yeah. 2025, and then then up to 122 by the end of the year. So I mean, that's that's, those, that, that's, that's out of the out and ordinary. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a this would be a pretty huge ass move. Such big numbers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, if we're, from where we're at right now all the way up to there, you're looking at, you know, 94%. Yeah. 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 You're almost doubling your money in the next year and a half. I'll take basically. it. I'm spending it right now. I got a loan. <laughs> hey, I mean, if, if if and this is all based on cycles and if and if and if the bullish structure holds and the weekly holds the bull zone. Uh, if the monthly that we looked at doesn't doesn't settle the month below fifty seven, if you if you get those kind of things still in play, I don't see any reason why this can't happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm there with you on fifty seven. As long as Bitcoin's above there, it's, it's yep. Higher term time frames remain upside positioned. But yeah, I mean, I think that's a good place to end this one. I know you have somewhere to go. I have somewhere to go as well. It's a pleasure as always to speak with you, Fibo Swani. Right socials and links will all be in the description below he's very prolific on trading view twitter and then he also has his own group too where you can learn directly from swanee on his thresholds theory it's actually super interesting there's a bunch of people from our own community in there and they love it it's a cyst it's like a, a true system it's very it's very different than stuff that i do but it's a system and that's what matters and that's you know that's what i think is probably the most important thing of you know of, you know of anyone talking about this shit is that it, it's got to be systematized otherwise how the fuck do you even know if it's working, how do you even know? How do you even test it? Um, but yeah. yeah, man, a pleasure as always to have you on. And um, I look forward to speaking to you, uh, speaking to you soon, man. All right. We'll, we'll talk soon. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the end of this year and at, at 85 and we'll, and we'll reconvene. Indeed. All righty. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm Take calling care. it 85. Let's bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, man. All Love right, it. man. All right. Thanks. Take care. Take care.